Right now I am in Male, which is the capital city of the country of Maldives. And in this video I'm going to cover my first impressions of what is looking like a very, very unique city. You come in. <laughs> so I just had the craziest possible start to today. I was about to like cross the street and this guy stopped his truck right next to me and he's apparently a fan and we're just talking for a bit. That was wild. Uh, it doesn't really happen in most countries. Okay, so I am in Hulu, Mali right now and if you haven't watched any of my previous videos from the Maldives, this is basically an island that was built 25 years ago to account for the housing crisis in Mali which is right next to it and to be a safe place in case the rest of the Maldives sinks because this place is two meters above sea level. I was about to take the ferry from here to Mali which takes like 15 minutes but then I found out the ferry is leaving in... to take the ferry but then the lady uh, selling the tickets told me that it's gonna be like an hour till the next ferry one ticket for Mali 12 o'clock oh in one hour oh crap is there any bus or something that what's the name thank you so I'm taking the bus to Mali to explore the city for the first time you know, because this is a newer island and newer housing get hotels or Airbnbs or whatever for usually a lot cheaper than Malay but even then it's not exactly cheap. I'm staying at the cheapest hotel I could find on booking.com that didn't have a terrible review score and even then it's like 75 bucks a night so nothing's really cheap in the Maldives. And this is a really nice bus by the way, it's like a double decker bus, I'm just sitting on the ground floor. Just got off the bus and I'm officially in Malé. So I'm gonna have to walk a kilometer to go to today's first stop. So the first thing that you're gonna notice when you get here is how narrow the streets are and how there's like very little space for sidewalks and sometimes there's like no sidewalks. You're just walking on the streets. With a population of 142,000, Malé is the historic capital where the sultans, the dynasties have ruled from, but it's also one of the most densely populated islands in the whole world. And there are all these like colorful little buildings everywhere too. Man, it is so hot right now. I'm sweating balls because I'm wearing this like black shirt which is my only synthetic shirt that's left. And I'm wearing jeans because like Bangladesh and a lot of other you know Muslim countries, it's probably not very respectful to be wearing short shorts, especially if you're trying to go to some um, religious establishments, which I'm gonna try to do later in the day. Maldives goes right through the equator, which means that it's always kind of hot and kind of humid, but there's rarely any fluctuation in the temperatures. It's always like between 25 to 28 degrees Celsius every single day, no matter what time of the day it is. The lowest recorded temperature in history was like 19 degrees Celsius, and the highest ever was like 34 degrees Celsius. There we go, the call to prayer starting right now. So like I was saying, Mali was historically the capital of Maldives from where the Sultan and his dynasties ruled over all the islands and it kind of used to be a wall city a lot like the wall cities of Montenegro and Albania that I've showed you with uh, fortifications and gates and big stone walls but all of that was destroyed including most of the Sultan's palace in 1968 when the city was being remodeled because by that time it was no longer a monarchy and uh, the person in charge just didn't want to leave too many traces left of the monarchy. The only building that's left of the old Sultan's palace is this building right behind me, which has been turned into the Maldivian National Museum, where you can go in and see some old photos and royal regalia and old flags and stuff. And it's right next to this park that I'm sitting in, which is called Sultan Park, where you can get some free Wi-Fi. You know what's crazy is that on the one kilometer walk here from the bus stop to this park, I ran into like three different Bangladeshis who recognized me from my video and just you know wanted to talk say hi take photos the crazy stat about the Maldives is the entire population of the country including everyone that lives on the islands is about half a million or like 500,000 out of that 100,000 of those people are migrants from Bangladesh 20% of the population are basically people from my country 
<laughs> That's why I keep meeting so many Bangladeshi. Most of these people are just like living here and they have families back home and they're making better money than they would working the same level jobs in Bangladesh and they're just sending that money back home. If you're living abroad and facing struggles and sending money back home, you should check out this app called TapTapSend. TapTapSend is a really simple app that allows you to send money back home from the US, UK, Canada, and Europe. There's a lot of good reasons for using TapTapSend. Number one, they have zero transaction fees. Number two, the transaction times are pretty fast compared to competitors. Transaction exchange rates are also pretty good. You can send your money back home directly to a bank account or to a Bcash account if that's more convenient. And number five, I've been in talks with TapTapSend and they've offered a special promo code for my viewers, which is OTG. So if you use that promo code, you get a 10 credit bonus on your first transaction. So that's 10 US dollars if you're sending money from the US, 10 Canadian dollars if you're sending money from Canada, 10 pounds if you're sending money from the UK, and 10 euros if you're sending money from Europe. So if you need to send money uh, from abroad to Bangladesh, definitely check out this app called TapTapSend. Now I'm gonna get some ice cream because it's so freaking hot. Alright, so I'm gonna recap the history of the Maldives real quick. People have lived here for at least 2,500 years. Around 500 BC, people from Sri Lanka and South India came here for the first time and along with them, they brought Hinduism and Buddhism. Around 200 AD, Arab traders first started visiting the islands as they were navigating their way across the Indian Ocean. So in 1153, this very famous Moroccan trader named Yusuf al-Babri, Some military people dressed in just very heavy uniform came and asked me where I'm from and what I'm doing and just walked on. So 1153, this very famous uh, Moroccan trader named Yusuf al-Babri arrived in the Maldives and he recited the whole Quran by heart, like he had it all memorized. And this impressed the Maldivian Sultan so much that he converted to Islam and converted the entire country to Islam. You can come to the historic center of the town of Male and you can see his uh, tomb that's still right there in the shrine that's right next to me. But it seems like you need special permission to go inside and take a better look so I couldn't go in and see it. And ever since then Maldives been a Muslim country and I think right now it is the only country on earth except for Mauritania maybe to a lesser extent that is a hundred percent Muslim so not all the travelers here are Muslim definitely but everyone that lives here and uh, even the migrants I think are supposed to be hundred percent Muslim which is pretty wild stat huh? so you can't really go in and take a close look at the tomb of Al-Babri but right on the other side of the street is probably the most famous mosque from Malé which is the Friday prayer mosque which was built in 1653 on top of what used to be the oldest mosque in Malé, which was built back in 1153 when the Sultan converted to Islam. But this was a mosque that was built like 500 years after that. And what makes this mosque so special is that it's made entirely out of coral reefs. The architecture of this place and the material used to make it and the way it's been built is so unique that it's been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Right next to the mosque is also this very famous unique minaret that's also like 500 years old. Right next to the famous mosque is also this very interesting looking cemetery where it also looks like all the tombstones are made from coral reef as well. So I was planning on getting ice cream but I was outside this cafe and ran into some Bangladeshi staff and they're like making me eat here and have some juice which is fine with me. I'm I also found some chicken shorma, which is one of my favorite things in the world. So I'm gonna have some shorma. Okay, this chicken shorma is huge. More Bangladeshis. Please, please, please. No, 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 no. no. Okay. no, 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 no. Please, please. My new friend, Mr. Mahmoud Ilyas, is giving me a ride on a scooter to the fish market because he's making a delivery day. And I'm going to be there next to you. No, no, no. I'm going to be there next to you. I'm going to be Thank you for everything. 
That guy was so nice. He didn't let me pay for my food. And then he gave me a ride basically to almost the next spot for our video, which is the local fish market of Mali. Thank you, thank you. Basically, I went to this local market and then to this fish market and there was so much going on in there, I decided to just make a different video out of it. So check out the next video if you want to see what happened in the local markets of Malay. This must be some kind of big port area because I see a lot of speedboats and ferries that are parked here. You know, I keep meeting a lot of people here from Bangladesh and I talk to them about their lives and they say, their lives here are better than it would be in Bangladesh. Just the culture is better to people that are in these working class positions. Because apparently people here are a lot more down to earth. Like doesn't matter if you're like a MP or a policeman. Uh, you wouldn't know when you like talk to people how much they make or what status they have in their job. Because everyone's so down to earth. Which is quite contrary to what you see in a lot of other places in um, South Asia. Including where I'm from Bangladesh. Where like if someone makes more money or has more authority, people often make a point to try their best to like show off. I was at Mafushi at a different island a few days ago and the president of the Maldives was there. He was at my hotel for some special event that was going on. He just had like one or two security guards with him. He was wearing like a half sleeve shirt and he just walked past us and like smiled at us and responded to this guy that like greeted him. That wouldn't happen in I feel like any other South Asian country for sure. Part of that is because it's so small and it's relatively safe over here, but also because people seem to be a lot more down to earth. So like a hundred yards away from that fish market, which is right there, is this place called Republic Square, which is like the historic center of the whole city with a huge flag of the Maldives flying always like the one right behind me. And this is historic because this is where like a lot of the protests in the last century has often started or culminated. At the center of Maldives is also this huge complex called the Islamic Center which has the biggest mosque of the Maldives that was built in 1984 with its uh, signature golden massive domes and which can accommodate up to 5,000 people. So this is not an ancient mosque but it's a very impressive one nonetheless and without a doubt the most uh, recognizable architectural landmark in the whole city of Mali. And beyond the mosque there's also an Islamic convention center and a Islamic library in the premises of this place as well. By the way, this place is also literally right next to Sultan Park where we are at earlier. So if one person from Morocco came and brought Islam with them to the Maldives, another very famous Moroccan traveler came here 200 years later. Ibn Battuta was here in 1344 and he stayed here for around 8 months during his world travels and in this time he married into the royal family and he seemed like he had a pretty good time. It's believed that he had a total of six wives in these eight months. At any point, he didn't have more than four wives because that's the maximum allowed under Islamic law. So he divorced people as necessary along the way. This guy had a really interesting life. No matter where he went, if he stayed for a couple of months, he just married one or two people or more. And then when he left, he just divorced those wives and moved on. And in this time, he was also made a judge in the royal court after he married into the royal family. And one little interesting fact I heard is that when he came here like 700 years ago, even though this was an Islamic country, no one was wearing tops at that point. So one of the things he tried to do during his rule as a judge was he tried to criminalize being topless in the Maldives. So in the 16th century, the Maldives was uh, conquered and colonized by Portuguese colonizers. And for a period of 15 years, it was under Portuguese control, which was the only time in this nation's history it was actually being controlled by some foreign invaders. Against all odds, in 15 years, some rebels fought back against the Portuguese successfully and took back their country. After that, they had like loose agreements with the Dutch, the British, and the French to protect themselves from attacks from their neighboring countries and from the Portuguese, but they always controlled their internal affairs. Then finally, in 1965, the country became completely independent from the Brits and it became a republic in 1968. By the way, right on the opposite side of that famous Friday mosque is the residence of the current president of the Maldives. He lives in this like very normal looking uh, one story house, not a lot of crazy security. It's literally like a hundred meters away from the ocean, which is that way. So I guess they don't really need a fort to protect their president because he doesn't have a lot of uh, powerful enemies. It's 
So I was craving that ice cream from earlier and I also need to spend my rupiahs. So I just got myself a $4 Nutella milkshake. Really good. So I just walked over all the way to the other end of Malé and I see the spot that I had no idea existed with uh, surfable waves where all these surfers and bodyboarders are going at it. Wish I had known about this place before today because I don't think I'm going to get a chance to surf because it's going to be like dark in an hour and then tomorrow morning I'm leaving. Like it's not the longest waves or whatever but it's still very surfable waves and this is supposed to be the off season for Maldives. Like I knew there were islands away from here but I had no idea you could just do that in Mali itself. A uh, ticket to Hulu Mali. Actually managed to catch the ferry this time. I was going to this restaurant to like use the bathroom and ran into some other person from my country who also recognized me from the videos and he got me a free Coke. That is it for this video and I think this is the last video from the Maldives because I'm leaving early tomorrow morning and it's going to get dark really soon today. So if you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you want to watch more videos like this, feel free to follow my Facebook page or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want real-time travel updates, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Madeira on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video from I don't know where. Maybe somewhere in Bangladesh. So if you watch this video and want to know more about visiting the Maldives, you're in luck because I just recently started writing for my blog again and wrote all these different articles like top 17 activities in the Maldives or how to travel the Maldives on a budget. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link for that in the comments.